Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Fallout 4. I am Kuno. That is Codsworth. This is a dilapidated house. I know I already did this gag once, but hey, repetition is fun. As you may remember, on our last time here, we killed some flies. Well, Codsworth killed a lot of them. I killed a few. Now he's waiting for us to talk to him. So let's do that. Codsworth. Mom! Sir and young Sean! Yep, not here. They aren't here! Okay, let's be nice to Codsworth. Thanks for trying, Codsworth. Poor guy's trying. You can't keep up, Mum. What about the city? Yes, the city. Concord is nearby. This is kind well, of a suburb, really. The people there have only shot at me a few times. Oh, only a few times. I'm gonna be sarcastic here. I like these people already. Because I can't. Oh, good. Maybe you'll get along then, and they can help you find your Codsworth Shaw. is immune to sarcasm. Okay, and that's all we can do with Codsworth right, right now. He can't be taken as a follower just yet. We've got to do some other stuff first. But that's okay, because we're going to get a puppy first. I'm not going to sit in the chair. Although, before that first, we've got to do some other things. Let's pick up that flag. And, uh, let's see. Anything around here? Car and a rattle. Dress. We'll change our clothes. And now we're going to wander around here. Before we head back out to the main part of the town and do some crafting, I told you there's going to be crafting, we're going to head over to this important area here behind this blue house. There's a root cellar. And the root cellar has things in it. This is a pretty short transition. And then we get into here. We got a few things there. Tin cans. Purified water. Aluminum cans. Okay, they're aluminum, not tin. You know what I mean. Various things. It's just some useful stuff when you're heading out into the wastes. Purified water especially is useful because it heals you without any sort of radiation gain. And as I mentioned in the last video, radiation is particularly nasty this time around since it reduces your maximum health. So any sort of healing you can get that does not add radiation is going to be very useful to pick up. So we've gotten now, uh, let's see, um, three things of purified water. You should give 40 hit points. Don't weigh a lot. But then stuff like rad roach meat, yeah, that's kind of nasty, but we'll cook that up later into something useful. But pork and beans. Gives 20 hit points, half as much as a thing of purified water, but gives you 6 rads. So it's actually really effectively only giving you 14 hit points. Because even if you're down 20 hit points and you take it, try to get back up to full, it's going to give you 20 hit points that take away 6 maximum hit points because of the rads. So, eh, not all that useful. Mainly I end up just picking up the uh, pre-cooked stuff here, like Instamash, whatever for either crafting in some cases, or to sell in other cases. Or just to kind of hang on to in case I do some other stuff that won't well, buy a perk. I oh, forgot about those. Or by um, adding on to some of the armor, well, powered armor specifically, that allows you to eat radiated food without actually getting the radiation. That's not until much later. Here we have a safe. It takes advanced no skill. Way I, I don't have this. that yet. Haven't leveled up, so I don't have a perk slot yet to work with. Back out to the Commonwealth. Uh, loading. Here we are. Now, going to head back around here. Over to... This is not our house. We don't need to go in here. Wrong house. Sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. Okay, heading over to... There we are. This is our house. Got, Cos got Cosworth outside. Ugh, stumble every time I try to say his name. Now here on the counter, Grognak the Barbarian. Yes. Free perk. There are multiple Grognaks around the wasteland, and they each give you stacking types of perks. First one will give you this one. Now over here in Sean's old room, I'm going to pick up this. Some nice uh, nuclear material. Get some stuff here. And underneath, there's a year special book. Gives me one free attribute point. 
Normally I would put this into Perception or Charisma, just Charisma in order to make things a little easier to, uh, you know, persuade people, because that does happen a lot. And perception just because, you know, bats make it a little easier. Or into Agility, huh, pardon me, into Agility in order just to make my general shooting a bit better. Luck gives you better uh, equipment that you'll find and, you know, just generally better stuff that you'll find. Better chance of criticals, that sort of thing. But I'm going to put it into intelligence right now. Because I want more XP. I actually want to level up. Because I want more perks. More crafting stuff. I'm coming, sweetheart. Aww. Oh, little tender moment there. And we'll scavenge in our own house. I don't remember storing a hot plate in that dresser. That seems odd. So in the 200 years interim between being frozen and coming back to this house, someone broke into the house, put a hot plate in that dresser, and scarpered. That seems weird. They left the comic book on the counter and the year special book under there and put a hot plate in my dresser. The apocalypse is weird. Okay, nothing over here. Nothing in that dresser. Whoops. Gotta jump a little. I left a TV, too. Cabinet, all this stuff. But they put a hot plate in my dresser. I'm sorry, I'm just stuck on that. Why did they do that? Very weird. Taking that bread box. That way you can tell if things are, you know, bigger or smaller than it. Hey, calendar's still there. Slightly out of date. And now to take that lamp. I'm allowed to loot this place. It's my house. There. Close the door. Although it's kind of pointless because the door fell off over there, but no, eh, you know. Appearances. Kicking that tire. Now over here. Useful thing. Useful thing. Very useful thing. Duct tape. We like duct tape. Duct tape and wonder glue. Adhesives. A lot of people get caught up in getting screws. You'll see that all over the place. People will say, oh, I need more desk fans for screws. No, screws I found all over the place in my last playthrough. But adhesives. Adhesives were annoying. Yes, you could craft them eventually with um, corn and some other crops. But, um, it's not that easy, really, to get corn, or at least I had problems with it. I couldn't find any settlements that were, uh, providing corn. It really annoyed me. I couldn't make any adhesives, so I really had to scramble for that, and yet I had an abundance of everything else. Kind of annoying. Here's the workshop. All settlements have a workshop. Here's the tooltip for it. Once you've activated the workshop in a settlement, you can now do all sorts of fun things. When you see things that have a yellow highlight like this, this means it's junk. Feel free to scrap it. It'll show you what you get when you scrap it. And that goes into the workshop and gives you more stuff to build things with. See, so we have structures, furniture, decorations, power. You can read all of these. I don't really need to read them off to you. And each one has a subsection inside of them. Pretty simple. Some of them you can't actually access until you get a certain perk. And it will show you up in the corner. I just pointed to my screen. I don't know why I did that. You can't see me. It will show you up in the corner which perk you need in order to do what. That. These. See, it's kind of pointless. It's, well, unless you have it on the main section here, it won't tell you what you're actually aiming at. Otherwise, it tries to tell you what you're wanting to build. But, uh, street lamp. It's tagged in yellow. That means you can't actually provide it with power and get lights for it. So, scrap it. Gives you a lot of stuff. I could scrap this tree, but I like the trees that are actually up. A street lamp out in the middle of nowhere. If something's blue, if 
it's outlined in blue, it's something that you can actually pick up and manipulate, and it'll give you a different prompt down at the bottom. If it's outlined in yellow, it will just lay there. All you can do is scrap it. You can't move it, you can't store it. All you can do is get rid of it. So you might as well. This entire house is scrap. You can scrap it and get a lot of stuff. Now you have a nice wide open area where you can build your own house later. This may seem like it's kind of pointless to do right now because it's just me. I don't have any sort of uh, other settlers or anything. But I'm getting my uh, resources out of the way ahead of time to a certain point. Don't accidentally scrap these. Your armor workbench, power armor station, weapons workbench. You need those. Scrapping them would be bad because you can't build more of the crafting things until you have the correct perk, level 2 of local leader. And that requires a nice high charisma and then also two levels worth of perks to waste on it. You will eventually want that, the local leader perk, because it allows you to make supply lines between your various settlements and that's more useful than it seems. Now see the shovel. I could store it if I wanted to. When am I going to use a shovel? Never, that's when. This, the garage diagnostic card. It looks like it should do something. We can see it's outlined in yellow. It doesn't do anything. I could scrap it. And I'm going to leave it for atmospherics. It looks nice. Now this, this lamp, I can't target it at all. It's a light source. It wants to stay there. I'm stuck with it. These tires, though, I have no need of a tire wall. No need of these tires. Okay, I think that's enough scrapping for right now. No. Well, no. But see, there. This is an idea of what happens with the blue. It gives me a choice between selecting it, in which case I can move it around. Put it somewhere. That's a valid place to place it. That isn't. You can tell the difference very easily. If I just place it, put it there. If I choose to store it, it'll store it in the workbench, but without disassembling it. If I scrap it, it'll scrap it and store the components in the workbench. You'll get less components for scrapping it than you will for just storing it and, well, making it again. You can make a kickball, yes, if you have enough rubber. It takes more to make it, well, you know, basically, it's diminishing returns. It takes more to make one than you actually get back from scrapping it. Which is a little odd. So if you ever want to have... I lost my kickball. Oh, there it is. Going into the street. I'd chase it, but I might get hit by a car. <laughs> anyway, so if you ever want to make a bunch of kickballs, or have kickballs all over the place in a big arrow or something, or just be able to run up and kick them at settlers when you eventually get them, don't scrap the kickballs, just store them, because it'll take more resources to make them over again than you got from actually scrapping them. Cars like this, though, scrap them. Get the steel. Okay, I'm gonna scrap my dead door. You would think you'd be able to pick up this door and put it somewhere back, you know, like, back in place. You can't. Can't pick it up. You have to scrap it. And when you try to actually craft another door, I found this out the hard way, try to craft another door and place it there, it won't snap into place. The doors only go into crafted buildings, and this is not a crafted building. It's a pre-existing building. There are many problems with the settlement system, which I will go over in depth much later. Right now, I am kind of wasting some time here, which could be spent getting our furry friend, but I did want to get some uh, updates here, because now we're going to craft some additions for our pistol. I'm going to upgrade the receiver to a hardened receiver. You can see how it shows the changes. So the game doesn't actually expect you to do this ahead of time, because later when I... Uh, do get some settlers, there'll be tutorial missions walking me through crafting and uh, doing the sort of thing that I'm doing right now. 
and it'll be slightly confused in that I've already done the things that it's wanting me to do. Oh, darn, I don't have enough stuff to upgrade. Yeah, I don't have any leather, and I'm out of adhesive already. It took all my adhesive to put a new receiver on my gun. So yes, everything in Post-Apocalyptia is attached with, you know, glue and tape. Slightly weird, but there it is. Gun doesn't look all that different, but it now hits harder. So that's useful. Okay, and there's still a little bit more to do before we leave. Just a little bit. I think this is the right house. I did hear something. Ah. Ah. Darn it. Tried to change weapons and accidentally changed uh, viewpoints. Now, how is there something below me? Oh. See, the pips only show up. Me. I've taken radiation damage, reducing my max health. Yeah, I know that. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Anyway, those red pips, again, only show up when something is actively trying to kill you. It would have been nice if they had shown up before I went into the building with the angry rad roaches, but no. Okay, here we have the first couple of things to unlock in the game. You'll notice the safe is trapped. Now, in previous Fallout games, you actually had to have, say, explosive skills or survival skills in order to disarm things. In Fallout 4, you have to point at something and hit your action button. And you've now disarmed it. Disappointingly simple. Now, I've got a couple of bobby pins, so let's go ahead and... Yes, it's the same way to unlock as always. Let's go ahead and... Nope. There we go. Didn't Sweet. even use up a bobby pin. And now, got some more stuff. Just take all of that. Got some more XP. And hopefully, with unlocking this... Yep. It's the same sort of hacking thing. Let's see. Hmm. Wars may never change, but the password did. Okay, so like this one. So. Could be either of those. It's not that. It's not that. It's not that. Could be that. Could be that. Could be that. It's not that. Alright, let's hunt down the little matches here. Look at these. When you get brackets that actually enclose when they have a front and back to it, well, in this case it reset tries, but in other cases it'll remove duds. Password sets that don't actually work. It's the same as it was in Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. Well, that's kind of creepy. In this case, it's not actually taking that, I guess because it has a password in between it. First time I've actually seen that happen. It's a little odd. Got a bracket front and back, but it didn't want to use it as a match because there were letters in between it. Yeah, that is one instead of random figures. Okay, so Wars had one likeness, so that still is a match. As is that, and that. So, we got three to try. Okay, safe had two. So, again, could be either of those. Got it. And it was Lake. Not going to actually look through all of these, because there's not any point. It's flavor text about basically a drug dealer. It's I could click through all of them and let you read them, 
but it doesn't even unlock anything useful. So, not going to read through all of those because it's going to take precious time that we could be using to get our dog. Oh, and in back of this house, as the owner was a drug dealer, there is the town's chemistry station, where you can build chems and a bag of fertilizer. Now, if you want, you can use the button that you assigned. Oh, crud, I can't yet because this isn't technically a full... Pardon me for just a moment. Normally you can hold down a button and bring up the workshop interface wherever you're wandering inside the town. But it's not going to let me do that right now. Because I haven't gone through the tutorial and everything yet, and it's being grumpy. What I'm wanting to do is move the chemistry station somewhere a little easier to work with. Oh, and those green lines? That's the limit of your uh, settlement. That is where you can eventually move things to. You know, so I'm rotating it. That's the mouse buttons. Left and right mouse buttons, rotate it left and right. Now, let's see, we'll just put it right next to the cooking station. Chems and food. Just what everyone needs. And now, in here, I remember there's a rad roach. And I missed it. That should be the last of the enemies that are in Sanctuary, that I remember about. Oh, sure, now it's telling me I can hold a button to open the workshop menu. Didn't work before. Okay. First things first, I'm going to store all of my junk in the workshop. This is very useful when you've got a settlement that you know you're going to be coming back to, or one that you've hooked up to... Well, we'll get to that later. One so that you can hook up to a route so that it's connecting all of your settlements. That's something we'll get to much, much later. But putting all of your junk into the workshop, which has an unlimited amount of storage potential, means you're not carrying all of it. And if you're coming back here to craft later anyway, you might as well. And now, whenever I want to craft at any of these placements, I don't have to be carrying what I'm going to craft with. Now, what I'm going to do here is grill up some rad roach. You know, like you do. And that got me enough XP to level up. There's a lot of recipes. The important thing about all of them is that when you cook food, it takes the radiation out. So all of that rad roach meat is now radiation free. And it gives me a lot more HP to boot. Grilled rad roach, 30 HP for half a pound worth of weight, and no rads. So, there we go. Other things, like Myler cakes, gives you water breathing. Kind of useful. Deathclaw steak, very useful. Gives you agility for one hour. And a lot of HP back. Anyway, we won't get stats like that for a while. It's going to be a while before we can kill a Deathclaw. Okay. I'm going to... First off, put that mod in there. And then... Now we'll... We're going to leave the rest of this here, and now... Very quickly... Head out. Oh, grenades. Grenades are nice. Especially now that there's actually a dedicated grenade button. Instead of having to switch two grenades, throw them, and then switch back to your weapon. Yeah, 
I just kind of strip everyone that I come across. They deserve it. I now have some better armor I can switch into. A drifter outfit. Later, we're going to upgrade the uh, Vault 111 jumpsuit with some layers that will make it more resistant, but for right now, now we look like we're in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. We fit in better. Heading down to the gas station. Where we find a dog. I'm over here. Hello. Hey, boy. What are you doing out here all by yourself? Okay. You lose your owner, buddy? Going to be friendly to the dog, because dog meat is okay, awesome. Then. Let's stick together. Hey. Talk How you doing, dog. buddy? And Hey boy. Show me a trick. You know any tricks? I command you. Okay, that's a trick. Kind of. Normally he actually does a trick trick. How you doing, buddy? I want an actual trick. Hey boy. You know any tricks? There we go, that's better. Okay. And with that, before Dogmeat flushes out the enemies that are here, and yes, Dogmeat is his name. I know it's just showing Dog, but we will find out a little later that it's Dogmeat. If you've played any Fallout games, you know he's Dogmeat. And he is awesome. Oh, one last thing I still need to do. I forgot to go to the pick, to the perk screen to pick a perk. Pick a peck of perks. Just one. We are going to go down and increase my locksmith. Because being able to pick advanced locks is going to be useful. Next level we're going to get Hacker. I believe I discussed this before. And after that we're going to go for Black Widow. It may not be an optimized build, but it's what I like to do. So we're going to do it. So there. And now, as light fades away... Whoa! Okay. On second thought, we're going to have a little bit of a fight before we head out. These are mole rats. They've changed a bit. You'll notice they are significantly more ugly now. Hey. Did I ask you to fight me? Ah, got you in mid-jump. Alright, talk me got some of them. I got the rest of them. This is the fight I was trying to not trigger. Saw how well that went. And again, this is the sort of fight that now it can trigger on you, it can just kind of spring, because you can't see where the enemies are at. And they can just pop out, out of anywhere. Having stripped the mole rats bare, we're going to go in here for right now. Dog meat, get over here. Over, over here. Did you just open that door? awesome. And you'll see here we have another work workshop. So now we've unlocked this place as yet another settlement. In case I want to do anything with it. But for right now, I'm going to end the video. We have our dog. We've progressed a bit further. Got some armor got some weapons, got a whole new place to loot, did a little crafting, had a little combat, didn't do a little dance, we're not getting down tonight. But all in all, I think a successful little foray. So, we'll see you next time, 
hopefully I can get dog meat to clean up those carcasses. And we will travel into Concord, which is just over those hills. No, don't go out there yet, Con Concord. I just tried to call you Concord. Don't go out there yet, dog meat. It's dangerous out there. Sun's going down. We'll wait in here for right now. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye.